this is Dell Latitude laptop. Let's check the model number, which is right behind. Dell Latitude 5590. So today we're going to install Windows in UEFI format. So this is quite old and somehow the Windows is uh, deleted. Uh, by the way, I'm going to install in UEFI format. There are two ways, you know, the legacy and UEFI. So make sure you do have the bootable USB thumb drive in correct way. Uh, make sure when you create it, you know how to create it. If you don't know, you can check the video link would be in the description. Because this is really important. For example, if you'd like to install in UEFI, and if you created your bootable USB in legacy, then it's not going to work and it would be completely wasted. So first, I'm going to connect into the USB port and make sure the machine is completely switched off. And also you can leave the charger connected. That would help because old machine could die out of battery. So we don't want to see any interruption. Okay. So while it's switched off, we're going to press the power button. And before we see anything on the screen, we're going to keep pressing F2. Thanks to Dell, they've always made it simple and unique. So F2 button is for Dell. And that is for BIOS entry. So once you keep pressing, it's going to come up. As you can see, this is the main screen. And from here, as you can see on the left hand side, there is all the menus and sub menus. And we can go through a couple of major ones to change the USB boot correctly. And in this video, I'm going to show you both ways, the legacy and UEFI in case if you needed to. So first of all, what you need to do, we need to get into boot sequence, which is that one. And as you can see, this is already selected into UEFI. Okay. By the way, let's say if you want to go for legacy, then what you need to do, you need to click here. For example, this is the first thing you need to do. But we're going to go back to UEFI because that's what we're looking for. So what you need to do, we need to click back into UEFI. Fine. Once it's done, then we're going to go to advanced boot option. And from here, as you can see, this is checked. We need to uncheck it because this is legacy option ROMs is only for legacy advantages. So we need to take those out. Anything we see legacy related, we need to disable it or uncheck it. And then we're going to go to security just for secure boot. And this one, secure boot mode, we need to check it. This is really important. And we can leave it as it is deployed mode. That's fine. Okay. Those are the actual settings, which is very simple, right? Now, for example, let's say if you want to go for legacy, you just need to do the opposite. For example, secure boot has to be unchecked. And then, you know, you need to check this one, the legacy option room. Uh, and that one in legacy. That's how simple it is. It's nothing complicated. However, once it's done, we're going to save these changes by pressing OK. And we're going to exit it. While we exit, it's going to uh, restart. And that, that moment, we're going to keep pressing F12. When you keep pressing F12, it's going to take us to the temporary boot option. Also, we can see easily what the changes that we've done. So as you can see, the UEFI boot, two options are available. One of them, my internal SSD. Sorry, both of them is my USB stick. It just says a couple of names, but any one of them should be fine. And also, if you look into the top, you can see there is a blue written there. Okay. This one shows, the highlighted option shows what is the changes that we made from the last BIOS entry. So we done EEFI and we turn on secure boot on. These are the options. So you can see at a glance like what you've done right here, which is also really good to know what you've done. 
And if there is any mistake, you can always go back and check. So once you selected hit enter, once you hit enter, it's going to show some sort of pattern like this. This is absolutely fine. Don't think it's stuck or something. Give it a couple of minutes so you can either decide the USB stick working or not. Because sometimes you get confused like might be this is stuck. But if you do have any sort of flashlight in your USB and if it is keep flashing, that's mean blinking, that's mean it's working. By the way, we are into the main page. From here, it's pretty simple. I believe everybody knows what to do, but still, just to show you guys, we're going to click on setup. We're going to accept the terms and condition. If you would like to read all the terms and condition, you can go through, but without selecting it, without accepting, it's not going to give you the option. Now, we're going to choose the bottom option for clean installation. The second one, always choose that one. And now it shows there is one drive and one partition from the entire drive, which is 256 gig. And it shows an allocated space means there is nothing. Now, let's say if you want to create more than one partition, you can just hit next or sorry, new, and you can customize the size. By the way, I just want to keep a single partition. So I'm going to keep it like that and hit next. Once I hit next, it's going to go through. It's going to copy all the files and folders into the main directory. It might take a couple of restarts, which is absolutely fine. Keep the charger connected. Let it go that way. And it's going to finalize after a couple of uh, restarts. And then it should be fine. Okay. So I'm going to fast forward this video just to show everything. Um, and also make sure uh, the boot is correct, you know. So it might take about 10 to 15 minutes. It depends. Sometimes if you do have internal SSD, then obviously it's going to be much more faster than any internal hard drive because, you know, obviously that is really first. And if you do have M.2, even it's going to be more faster. And sometimes it depends on how good quality is USB bootable sticks that you use. I mean, the actual hardware. And now it's uh, loading up. By the way, once you've done that and maybe you do have some sort of uh, driver issues because this is a new Windows. In that point, you need to connect this laptop into Internet, either the cable connection or Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi missing driver, try to have wired connection and go to Windows updates and that would update every single thing within a single click. OK, you don't have to worry about crashings or anything. And just choose the name. Try to minimize all the options that you're going to allow Windows to take control of you. And it will take several minutes to get to the main page. So I hope this video was helpful. If it does, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. As you can see, I have uh, many views, but compared to that, um, very less subscriber. Hope you'd support this channel. So thank you for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.